Hello, in this video we are going to review price discrimination. Let's uh, first assume that a monopolist faces two markets for its product. In market one, demand is given by Q1 equals 40 minus 0.2p, where the ones are just representing the market. And in market two, the monopolist faces the following demand conditions of 25 minus 0.3 three times p subscript two. Again the subscripts here just representing uh, which market. And let's also mention the monopolist has a total cost structure of TC equals 30 times Q. This means that the monopolist marginal cost is just equal to a constant thirty dollars. And doesn't matter which market you're producing this product in, marginal cost is always going to be the same here, in this case, constant $30. In our first case, we're going to analyze a situation where the monopolist just charges everybody the same price. In other words, there is no price discrimination. So in case A here, without price discrimination, the monopolist sets one price. The way this is going to work out is that the monopolist needs to figure out what the total market demand is. Okay, and we'll call that uh, Q, total market demand Q. And Q will just equal the individual market demands, the demand for market one plus the demand for market two. So we come up with this total market demand equation by just following these simple steps here by adding up these demand curves. Simplifying, we're going to get 65 minus 0.5p. You'll notice what I did here is I basically ignored these subscripts. Uh, when you're not price discriminating, the price in market one will equal the price in market two. So uh, ignoring those subscripts and just adding up the P terms, we get minus 0.5. Uh, the next thing we're going to do here is just uh, move right into profit maximization. So we need to get marginal revenue. And marginal revenue will come from the inverse demand. And just dividing through by 0.5 here, we get 130 minus 2Q. So the monopolist that does not price discriminate in this example faces a market inverse demand equation of P equals 130 minus 2Q. Okay, let me move to a clean screen. So let me just rewrite that inverse demand. From this inverse demand equation, it's fairly straightforward to derive marginal revenue. We'll use the kind of the shortcut method here, uh, recognizing that marginal revenue is like the inverse demand, except it has a slope that is twice as steep. Okay, so instead of minus 2q, it's minus 4q. Next, we'll set marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. Marginal cost we solved on the the previous screen and that was just a constant thirty dollars so 4q equals 130 minus 30 or 100 q equals 25 so this monopolist will sell a total of 25 units at a price of just plugging this 25 back into the inverse demand equation and we get a price of 130 minus 50 or $80. To calculate the firm's profit, total revenue minus total cost. Total revenue is price times quantity, so that is $80 times 25 minus total cost. Total cost was 30 times Q from the previous screen. Q in our case is 80, and we get profits of $1,250. So 
So that is how you uh, work. That's how you want to attack this type of problem when a monopolist is facing two markets but must charge everyone the same price. In part B of this example, we are going to look at the monopolist now engaging in price discrimination, charging each market the profit maximizing price. So in this case, um, we take the market demand equation from market one and we are going to solve this market equation for the inverse demand and doing that we'll get, well let me just show this step and finally dividing through by point two We get the inverse demand in market one. From there, it's straightforward to get marginal revenue. Remember, marginal revenue has a slope that is twice as steep as the inverse demand. Setting this marginal revenue equal to marginal cost will allow us to solve for the profit maximizing output level in market one. Q1 equals 17 and the price that the monopolist would set in market one just substituting 17 back into the where are you inverse demand we get a profit maximizing price in market one of hundred and fifteen dollars okay we're going to do the same setup now for market two in market two, the demand was originally given to us as 25 minus 0.3 P subscript 2. Solving for the inverse demand, dividing through by 0.3. we get that result. Turning the inverse demand into a marginal revenue equation and then setting marginal revenue equal to marginal cost just like we did in market one and then solving for Q we're going to get Q2 equals 8 and the profit maximizing price then in market 2 56 dollars and 67 cents one of the things that you should note here is that when the monopolist didn't price discriminate, he charged $80 across the board. And we can see that's, you know, that's a compromise. Really in market one, the profit maximizing price is $115, much higher than $80. Whereas in market two, the profit maximizing price of $56.67 is lower than the price of $80. So when you don't price discriminate, uh, you're not setting the ideal price for each of your customer groups. All right, the last thing I want to show is just let's calculate the uh, firm's profit here. Let me get a cl uh, clean screen. So profit with price discrimination, you're going to get something like this. Total revenue in market one is the price in market one times the quantity. Then we need to add our total revenue in market two, which is the price in market two times the quantity of eight. And then we need to subtract out our total cost. 
Uh, we are producing 25 units, 17 in market 1, 8 in market 2. And this will simplify down to 1,658 dollars and 36 cents. And you'll notice here that when a firm can successfully price discriminate, profits rise. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this video.